All right, so you have to do those things. So the data that you collected was this, yes? Okay, so in order to get your temperature changed for cold water, you're obviously going to do your final minus initial, and for hot water, the same thing. Um, when you get to your enthalpy change, the Q cold, we're going to be referring to this little sheet right here. Okay, so we've gotten our temperature final minus initial for hot water, cold water. Now we're going to have the joules lost. That means that that would be Q out, which would be the Q hot. You're going to be using this method, so you have your your total amount of water, which would be 100 grams, you have your change that you've already found, and you have your um, CP of water. And so you're just going to multiply that and get your number. Then you're going to do the same thing for the cold water. So this is Q cold. <clears throat> I'm using the same values, except now you're going to put in that change for the cold water. So now that you have your Q hot and Q cold, you can use that with this formula to figure out your Q calorimeter. So basically what we're looking at here is that all of the stuff that left the hot stuff went into the cold water and the calorimeter. So the calorimeter sucked up some of that energy. And that's how you guys are gonna do that. So go ahead and take your Q hot and Q cold, add them together and you're going to negate that value because we're swinging that Q cal over here to get a negative value. So you're going to have negative Q cold plus Q hot. Okay. Once you have that value, the final thing that you need to do is you're going to solve for your heat capacity of the calorimeter by dividing this value that you just found by your cold water change, your Q cold temperature change thing.